Hi everyone, and welcome back to Think Science, where today we will be continuing our series on cellular respiration. Today, we're going to be talking about pyruvate oxidation and the Krebs cycle. To learn about the first step, glycolysis, visit our channel and watch that video before this one. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon for notifications for future videos. So, let's get started. First, let's ask our question of the day. What is another name for the Krebs cycle? There are two other popular names that we can typically call this cycle. Leave your answers in the comments below. So we ended glycolysis with two pyruvate molecules. In pyruvate oxidation, we are going to take these two molecules and create two different molecules called acetyl-CoA, which are then going to be the reactants that we use in the Krebs cycle. Pyruvate is a three carbon molecule, whereas acetyl-CoA is a two carbon molecule. So to start the process, a carboxyl group, which has a carbon in it, is removed from the pyruvate. This step releases a carbon dioxide molecule. The remaining two carbon molecule is then oxidized, causing NAD plus to become NADH. Remember that if a molecule is oxidized, it means losing electrons. So these lost electrons are gained by NAD plus, which is why it turns into the NADH molecule and no longer has a positive charge. This two carbon molecule that we're left behind with is called acetyl. This acetyl molecule attaches to coenzyme A, or CoA for short, forming a molecule of acetyl-CoA. Because we started with two pyruvate molecules, this whole process will happen twice, creating two acetyl-CoA molecules. Keep in mind that pyruvate oxidation isn't usually counted as a step on its own because it's not as lengthy as the other steps. So think of it as a short bridge between glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. This is because we can't go from pyruvate to Krebs right away. We have to use the acetyl-CoA molecule as the first step in the Krebs cycle. But now that we have finished pyruvate oxidation and we have our acetyl-CoA molecules, we can begin the Krebs cycle. We start off with the CoA molecule, which like mentioned before has two carbons. This molecule combines with a four carbon molecule called acetate, forming a six carbon molecule that's called citrate. Citrate then releases two of its carbons in the form of two carbon dioxide molecules, which also, like in pyruvate oxidation, causes two NAD plus molecules to become NADH each time due to the oxidization. The four carbon molecule then creates ATP or sometimes GTP. Remember that GTP is a molecule similar to ATP in that they are both energy carriers. And then the four carbon molecule turns FAD into FADH2, which is a different electron carrier, similar to NADH. The four carbon molecule is used to connect ADP slash GDP and an extra phosphate group, forming ATP or GTP. Remember that ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate and ADP for adenosine diphosphate. Therefore, when we add the extra phosphate group, we go from two joint phosphate groups to three, just like the di and tri prefixes suggest in the ATP or GTP name. The four carbon molecule then also creates another NADH, and then we end up with our oxaloacetate again at the end, which is used with the acetyl-CoA to go through the whole Krebs cycle again. Per one glucose molecule, the Krebs cycle happens twice because we start off with two acetyl-CoA molecules. This means per one glucose molecule, we generate a total of two ATP, one from each Krebs cycle. But if the purpose of cellular respiration is to generate energy, why do both glycolysis and the Krebs cycle only produce two ATP each? Well, these two ATP each may not seem like a lot, but the main goal of Krebs cycle is also to produce a lot of electron carriers like NADH and FADH2. These electron carriers will help us create a lot of ATP in the third step of cellular respiration. Think of all the steps we've discussed so far as kind of setup steps for the third step, the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain, or ETC, is where we're going to produce most of our ATP. So far, we've only produced four ATP total, including glycolysis and Krebs, out of over 30 ATP per glucose molecule. In eukaryotes, both Pyruvate oxidation and the Krebs cycle take place in the mitochondrial matrix, which is the inside space of the mitochondria organelle. However, in prokaryotes, both of these processes take place in the cytoplasm of the cell. Thank you for watching our video. Stay tuned for our last video on cellular respiration to learn the whole process. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. 
If this video made sense to you, let us know and leave your questions in the comments so we can do our best to answer them. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks, science.